This is a list of medical conditions that dysregulate acetylcholine receptors. And because of this dysregulation of acetylcholine receptors, it requires some extra thought on how you use muscle relaxants, whether that be depolarizing muscle relaxants like succinylcholine or non-depolarizing muscle relaxants. These are the drugs that end in EM, like rocuronium or cisatricurium. The first disorder we'll talk about is strokes. The main concern in using succinylcholine is hyperkalemia, and we'll see how that affects the first several of these medical conditions. So in strokes, you have upregulation of acetylcholine receptors, and you do not want to use succinylcholine after 24 hours of a stroke. Succinylcholine can cause hyperkalemia in this case, and that risk can um, still happen up to months after the stroke. So you want to be very cautious in the use of succinylcholine, and definitely do not use it after 24 hours. Burns are the next disorder. These also cause upregulation of acetylcholine. You don't want to use these 24 to 48 hours after the burn. And the recovery of neuromuscular function to pre-burn levels can take months to years after the burn. Again, the concern is hyperkalemia here. Prolonged immobility. This also causes upregulation of acetylcholine receptors. There's no guidelines on how long a patient has to be immobile before having a hyperkalemic response. So the risk of reaction increases significantly after 16 days, but they can have a reaction at any time after immobility. So you want to be cautious in using succinylcholine. The next disorder is multiple sclerosis. Again, causes upregulation of acetylcholine receptors. You especially want to be careful with succinylcholine if the patient has flaccidity, spasticity, or hyperreflexia. And if you're using a non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, like cisatriconium or rocuronium, you may show resistance or sensitivity, so it's hard to predict how they'll react to rocuronium. If you're using a non-depolarizing muscle relaxant, you want to give small doses and monitor neuromuscular function. Now, normally we use a twitch monitor here, but it's worth noting that the twitch monitor may not be accurate depending on the site, depending on where you put it. For instance, if you use it on the orbicularis oculi, that'll underestimate muscle paralysis. Next disorder is ALS, or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. This also causes upregulation of acetylcholine receptors. These patients are at high risk for hyperkalemia, so again, you want to be cautious when using succinylcholine. You want to make sure the potassium is not too high to start off with. And in this case, they can be sensitive to the non-depolarizing agents. Next disorder is Guillain-Barre syndrome, again, causing upregulation of acetylcholine receptors. Here, succinylcholine is contraindicated. The risk of hyperkalemia will persist even after symptomatic recovery. So if they have Guillain-Barre and they don't have symptoms, they still have a risk of hyperkalemia. Guillain-Barre patients will again be sensitive to the NDMRs, the non-depolarizing agents. Next is the muscular dystrophies like Duchenne muscular dystrophy or Becker muscular dystrophy. Acetylcholine receptors are again upregulated here and succinylcholine is again contraindicated here. You can use these NDMRs, the non-depolarizing agents, and the patient's response may be normal or sensitive due to muscle wasting or decreased uh, contractile force. So their muscles are much smaller, they've been wasted away, they can be extra sensitive to the non-depolarizing agents. The FDA actually warns against the use of succinylcholine, going back to succinylcholine here, in, uh, in pediatric patients in general due to potentially undiagnosed muscular dystrophies and hyperkalemic arrest. So in kids in general, the FDA warns don't use succinylcholine just in case they have this disorder. Next disorder is myasthenia gravis. Here you have a downregulation of acetylcholine receptors, so they'll be resistant to succinylcholine use, and they'll be sensitive to non-depolarizing muscle relaxant use. Peridostigmine, which is a medication typically used to treat myasthenia gravis, this will diminish the sensitivity to the non-depolarizing agents, and it possibly prolongs the response to succinylcholine. So that's why they're resistant to succinylcholine and sensitive to um, the NDMRs. Reversal may also be ineffective here, since acetylcholine esterase inhibition is, is already happening from the peridostigmine that they might take regularly for myasthenia gravis. Next disorder is Lambert-Eaton syndrome. This is a disorder of prejunctional calcium. Um, you have autoantibodies against the calcium channels, the, the calcium receptors before the, the, the neuromuscular junction. These patients will be sensitive to both succinylcholine and non-depolarizing muscle relaxants. Neostigmine is ineffective here, so that's something to keep in mind. You cannot use neostigmine for reversal of non-depolarizing agents. Next, acetylcholine esterase poisoning. In this case, you'll have downregulation of the acetylcholine receptors, which results in a prolonged response to 
succinylcholine, just like in myasthenia gravis. Succinylcholine should be avoided in acetylcholinesterase poisoning because it's degraded by plasma cholinesterase. This can result in prolonged paralysis. Neostigmine should also be avoided since it worsens the problem. It worsens the acetylcholinesterase, the, the anticholinesterase poisoning that you already have. Lastly, organophosphate poisoning. This is a down regulation of acetylcholine receptors, and you might see some of the same uh, manifestations here. You might have resistance to succinylcholine. Hope this video on acetylcholine receptors and their dysregulation was helpful. Thank you for listening.